Science has become a dominant force in modern society. Discoveries made by scientists have reshaped how we look at the world and have led to technological breakthroughs that have put men and women in space, cured deadly diseases, and made life easier for millions of people. Underlying many scientific discoveries are common procedures, procedures people use to make sense of their surroundings in daily life. In this program, we will present a procedure called the scientific method. How are we to know if something we hear about nature is true? Some people are saying that the Earth's climate is changing, getting warmer, and if this warming is actually happening, will the weather become more extreme? For instance, will there be more droughts, hurricanes, and tornadoes? And will these extreme events become more intense? Other people say the climate is actually cooling. How are we to know the truth about these matters? Over time, people have developed an outstanding procedure for uncovering the secrets of nature. It is called the scientific method. The reason the scientific method is outstanding is that when you use its five steps to solve a problem, this procedure can be repeated by anyone to check out firsthand the truth of someone else's results or conclusions. It's sort of like that one time when I heard that white light was a blend of many colors hard to believe that white light is actually a blend of many colors, right? But with the use of a simple tool like a glass prism, anyone can discover the rainbow of different colors by passing light through this piece of glass. Using the prism here to show what light is made of is a relatively simple experiment, and experiments are all part of the scientific method. An example like that is why I don't have to take it on faith or believe it because some very well-known person said he or she knew that the facts were true. The scientific method is like that. In fact, experiments are an everyday part of science and the cornerstone of the scientific method. Let's look in a general way at the steps that make up the scientific method. Step 1. Ask a question. As you can see, I'm drinking hot chocolate from this cup, and the cup is made out of a ceramic material. As you all know, hot drinks are also served in paper and styrofoam containers. Now I wonder, which of these three types of materials will keep my hot chocolate drink hot the longest? Step 2. Form a hypothesis. Alana has noticed most coffee shops serve hot drinks in paper cups. So could it be reasonable to assume that paper is the best insulator? That is, it should do the best job of keeping the coffee hot. Now Alana believes she's ready to make a hypothesis, a prediction. The paper will hold the heat in longer because it is a better insulating material. In a sense, she has made an educated guess as to what is going to happen. So what is her next step? Step 3. Design and conduct an experiment. How can Alana find out what really is the truth about the materials that make up these containers? One way is to design an experiment which will actually demonstrate to Alana which container has the best insulating material. Suppose she puts the three types of containers side by side, heats up some water, and pours equal amounts of the hot water into each of the containers. It would be good to measure and record the temperature in each container at the very beginning to verify they are all the same. Then she would record the temperature again five minutes later and repeat this procedure until 20 minutes has passed. She would write down the measured temperatures for each kind of container at the five minute interval. At the end of the 20 minutes, the experiment would be completed. Step four, analyze the results of the experiment. Here is a graph plotting the temperature change for each container. We can see after 20 minutes, the temperature in the ceramic mug was 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or 43.34 degrees Celsius. The paper, 
112 degrees Fahrenheit or 44.44 degrees Celsius, and the styrofoam retained the heat the best at 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 48.89 degrees Celsius. So, Alana's prediction that the paper would be the best insulator turned out to be rejected. Perhaps there are other reasons paper is used more often in coffee shops. Paper may be cheaper or more recyclable. Step 5. Draw a conclusion. Based on our observation, styrofoam is the best insulator for keeping the hot chocolate hot the longest. In addition, the whole procedure may raise some new questions. Why is styrofoam a better insulator? Or if the paper were thicker, would the results have been different? 